So welcome to everybody listening now and in the future. Um, we are here today with Carrie Benenson Tausick. Uh, she's giving a free talk today. And the title of the talk here is Releasing Shock to the Waters. That's a free introductory lecture on how to help clients with long haul syndrome. I'm, I'm going to let Carrie sort of introduce all the long haul syndromes that she knows and will be talking about. And then I'd like to just take a minute and introduce Carrie Benenson Tausick for those of you who don't know her. Um, Carrie Benenson Tausick, DO, IT, and MP, <laughs> holds dual diplomas in osteopathy, osteopathy, and osteopathic science. She is a docent in Italy, a professor, and also teaches postgraduate programs privately, individually in the US. Carrie is a certified graduate of Boston University and the College of Etudes Osteopathique in Canada. Teaching and working both in Italy and in the US, she is also a published writer as well as a communication coordinator for the Tuscany Division of the National Italian Society of Registered Osteopaths. She first made her mark as an educator when her advanced visceral manipulation course on osteopathy and Lyme disease was featured by Bastyr University's Continuing Education Department in 2016. Soon afterwards, she introduced her full visceral program in the U.S., where she was invited to write for a national publication, Massage Magazine, on the importance of visceral manipulation as a modality for manual therapists. She continues to write for Massage Magazine, and in the fall of 2022, they also published her ebook on how to work online. She is now focusing on the subjects of including long COVID, biodynamic pregnancy, reflections of anatomy in nature, anti-stress techniques to incorporate into practice, and biodynamics and dialogue with the viscera, as well as dancing with the anatomy, movement work to stimulate healing, and how to work with clients online. So please go ahead, Carrie. Thank you, Kate. Whoa, it's just me, right? <laughs> yes, it's just you. <laughs> it's just me. It's just me. So thank you all for coming. This is um, a really important lecture for me. You're the first people to experience some of this uh, subject matter. I'd like to just start by creating a container for us to ground ourselves as we enter this space together. So if I would welcome you all to close your eyes, take a three deep breaths in and out, and begin to imagine breathing in golden light as you breathe in through your nose, you're taking in the light as it goes into your lungs and begins to expand throughout the entire body. This is the love of the universe. And as you breathe in deeply, you begin to root golden roots into the earth. With each breath, you fill with this golden light. And the golden light begins to expand beyond your skin, filling the room, filling the day. Breathing deeply in and out, the roots begin to go deeper past the ground, the pavement, the carpet, into the earth, reaching towards the magma, the center of the earth, the cerebral spinal fluid of the earth. Breathing deeply, you expand this light out through your hands and feet. You are this golden light. And together we create this gorgeous, illuminating golden container filled with the intention of change and to receive necessary to fill in those spaces, we'll call them. As you continue to breathe, that golden light flushes through and washes like a light shower, any spaces that are folded congested, calling for change, you breathe it in. And as you breathe it in, you feel this golden light touching the tonsils, 
touching the tonsils as it comes in. The golden light blesses the immune system. The first dispatch center in the throat, the golden light flushes in. The golden light flushes into your sinuses, your breathing sinuses, the airways, and fills deeply into the lungs, flushing a light shower through the dense paren parenchymal tissue of the lungs. It blesses you, your breath. You are in touch with your lungs directly. Creator, the oxygen. The lungs are the only organs that touch directly oxygen. And then it brings the oxygen to the rest of the community of the body. All the other organs receive oxygen through nourishment from the blood. Breathing in, taking three more deep breaths. You take in now the golden light up through your feet as it seeps in through the legs and up through the central line, bathing the axis of stress. Bathing your central line, it goes up and through the crown chakra, reaching the sky. You are heaven on earth. for just a couple more moments, connecting to the energy from the earth pulling up, reaching through the body, bathing the whole system with light as it goes up to the sky, and then back down from the sky through the central core, flushing through the cranial sphere, bathing the jaw, the throat, the shoulders, the heart space, the belly, the hips and the legs, it goes down back, giving to the earth as you are connected. Taking another deep breath in, slowly begin to wiggle your hands, your toes, your fingers, eyes halfway open coming to the thinking space. As in this instant, we make an instant community together, this circle from across the world. And I welcome, welcome you all to this lecture today and hope and pray that it resonates something, something speaks to you, something touches you, reminding you that the golden light is within you and that we are all connected. So welcome all, I recognize some faces. I see some lovely new ones, so thank you for coming today. This is quite a PowerPoint presentation. And so we're going to just go at an easy pace and see what we can get done, which is a nice way to create a pace, okay? So let's see. All right, broadcasting all the way from Florence, Italy, where I am mostly based. I come back to the States often and I do teaching as I'll be talking about some of the courses that are coming up, but really this is a very thick presentation. This has a lot of information and I'm happy to share it with you. Okay. Do not feel lonely. The entire universe is inside you. We reference often when we're doing family constellation work, talking to the body. Some of these things that are happening to us sometimes come through the ancestral line to our genetics. And just remembering that the entire universe is also inside of us. Our ancestors are also there to help us. And that we can always reach back and give what does not serve to that golden light. Calling it in, bathing it through the body. These visualization exercises can be very helpful in some of these long haul syndromes that I'm going to present to you today. So this is me, pictures of me with the bees. That's one thing I did during COVID was I did my apiculturista training again to connect with the bees. 
I did a lecture for the cranial, Biodynamic Cranial Sacral Society Association about the bees and the hive mind. They have great resonance in terms of a part of nature that we can source to reset our frequencies, especially when we find that there's dysfunction or is in the endocrine system, the hormonal system, the chemical messaging system, which is one of the main systems that has been affected by long COVID and other long haul syndromes. I am a traditionally trained osteopath, a non-medical osteopath. I've been working for 20 years with people. I started my training in Switzerland and finished in Canada and have that as my platform. But I do a lot and have since I was, I, I was told when I was five years old, I was putting my hands on people and laying with the bees that wouldn't sting. And often I go back to the old traditional writings for influence, for inspiration. And then in deep meditation, I have, especially for these long haul syndromes, really recreated some of the work to hold more of a global intention when working with a person we're working with a community and that's a it's a big message with the long with the discussion involving long COVID. I teach also in Italy for Centro Name which is the Centro Studi of Natural Medicine uh, and uh, I'm also a master forest bather which has really helped in terms of uh, sourcing more, how we can create more source or hold more source by connecting to nature when we're working with people, even if we're imagining it. That Mother Nature is there actually to offer her unconditional love and to act as a fulcrum sometimes when we need to get ourselves out of the way, especially if we're not feeling very well. It's really important to find a neutral space, but sometimes the offering in the basket of change, the mirroring of how nature is truly mirrors our physiology everywhere we look from the lymphatic system of the tree to the veins of the earth with the water sources in the land the planet actually mirrors our physiology and the more that we come in relation with it the more we may be able to offer someone something as we stand in that neutral fulcrum space so i studied and i studied and i studied and I ended up start, uh, starting to focus on Lyme disease because a bunch of people showed up at my door with Lyme disease in Santa Fe, New Mexico. All these patients, what is this Lyme disease, Lyme disease? And learning more about how visceral manipulation or soft tissue manipulation or biodynamic visceral, whatever your touch may be, massage therapy can offer a systemic approach to care, which is very important now with long COVID. It is a systemic problem. And people are having problems when they're going from specialist to specialist to find care. So this was one of the first writings that I did for Massage Magazine was to start to talk about how manual therapy and now even trauma therapists, who I will speak to today, who have a big role in hands-on care, are becoming the, finder, the founders of holistic change when the body actually needs to adjust in a deeper level. And we'll talk more about that as well. So yes, for my osteopathic. I had two degrees of osteopathy and I decided to pick four years of study in Lyme disease because of these people I couldn't help. What's going on? They, if I would do a full session, they would have, they would end up feeling worse. I really, and I came from a study, uh, a schooling, an education where you work with hierarchy. First, you work with the most stuck organ, then you work with the second less stuck structure. You work on what is more stuck to less stuck. Well, I learned with these long haul syndromes, including Lyme, autoimmune, et cetera, that it was very important to work the other way around, to open the portals of drainage and to begin a different type of dialogue, a multidimensional dialogue. When long COVID hit or when COVID hit, uh, there was a big asking to really dig deep and learn how to help people in isolation from far away. And I did a lot of meditation with patients. There seemed to be some change and that grew. But what was fascinating to me is when I returned to my studies, I wrote 500 pages on Lyme disease and osteopathic techniques applied to Lyme disease. I noticed a lot of similarities, headaches, joint pain, carditis, pain. And when we go to see the list from the CDC of the long COVID symptoms, it's very similar. So I started to pull out again, this idea of, Protocol. Protocol was never something that we did in osteopathic college. 
You never treated someone with a protocol. You treated the person and you worked with what was the most stuck in this case. I learned that actually a step one, two, three, four was most important because the systems needed to be to be supported in the best way. These patients that were coming in all had major similarities and I will highlight those for you in terms of which areas presented to be the most stuck. Started to learn more even about autoimmune disease because autoimmune, a lot of autoimmune sort of, some of the people with Lyme were categorized under autoimmune and vice versa. There was this sort of spiral of similarities and I studied and we have 50 million people in the US that have at least one autoimmune diagnosis. And autoimmune disease with research and PubMed and National, National Institute of Health is linked to, to up to 80 diseases. And so here are some of the ones that are listed, which are also commonly now being named with long COVID. Again, presenting similarities. In my questionnaires, in my investigation, in my research, I learned that the most stuck areas on those patients coming in with what we're going to call umbrella under autoimmune disorder Areas were the ethmoid, which is the bone behind the nose that puts an anchor on the nervous system. Maybe they chipped their two front teeth. Maybe they bonked their nose. Maybe there was some invasive dental care. There was a lot of strain on the ethmoid bone as well as the cranial base, which is at the base of the back of the head. It's actually inside the cranial sphere. And there was also quite a, um, quite a lot of influence and scars that affected also the position of the liver. You could see that the ribs were compressed down on the right. And areas of injury, the top three were head, shoulders, and pelvis, putting what we call the core link into a stuck position, locked. When we breathe and walk, there's a rocking that most of you know about, but there's a rocking sensation. The nervous system should be bathing itself with each step. The cerebral spinal fluid trickling down and washing the nerves, bathing the nervous system, conducting with the fluids. And this whole central link was presenting to be stuck. Therefore, auto regulation areas of the brain were anchored down. This is where the hypothalamus and pituitary rests. Those are the command centers of, of functionality in the body. So we started to see as well that the cranial osteopathy was very helpful to a lot of these patients and also working less was important. Less, more frequent sessions. How can we help people with long COVID that seems to be similar, but it's also very different and it is different in its chemical imbalance and what it is that's fogging the system. Um, research shows that now there's an estimate that the Department of Health estimates that there are between 7.7 .7 to 200 million Americans that are still dealing with COVID in some way, that there are over 200 symptoms linked to long COVID. has all different types. Traditional osteopaths, it really depends on the person, as you know, I am me. And I sometimes download what I'm supposed to do that day in a sense that it comes from my heart, leaving the study to the left, the information to the right, but I'm always based on the idea of circulation. In terms of the manual therapy that I teach, there's a sense of holding in a multidimensional way. My way of teaching has actually completely changed since COVID. And I'll explain about this triangular hold and multidimensional approach to holding the community, holding several places at once and center pointing with love as the fulcrum, which the monks taught me. I'll, I'll give a shout out to the monks that have really taught me a lot in the past two years. But the basis is that we really focus on the exchange. Our job in terms of our training is to make sure that the structures are free so that the oxygenated, nutrient-rich blood can get transported to site. That's our only job. We're like mechanics of the body, tooth to toe. We know this, we know that. Our real job is really to make sure that the blood is flowing. The rule of the, the, rule of the artery is absolute. And that goes back to Andrew Taylor Still, who's known as the founding father of osteopathy, who apparently has the same birthday. I have the same birthday as him, I just found out last year. That being said, the exchange place, the capillaries make up 74% of the circulatory system and they don't have muscular tissue to to beat the, fl the fluids through. So there's a big place for the biodynamics and dialoguing with these capillaries. It depends on the areas and what's going on, but we're finding that, that 
I'm finding clinically speaking, and there is a lot of research in what I'm going to offer you in terms of articles and where to go to find out more, but the exchange points of the capillary, capillaries is where this muddy situation is happening that's triggering this sort of long COVID, or so we think. The sacred, the sacred crossings, the sacred spaces in the body, the capillaries are a place where the lymphatics cross, the venous drainage, the non-oxygenated waste-filled blood, and the ar arteries, which are actually called arterioles. These fine, 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 uh, they're the size of a quarter piece of hair. And in this small microscopic exchange place is also where a lot of immune scanning happens can occur. Why do the arteries and arterioles have power to pull and the capillaries not? Why are the capillaries expanding every 20 seconds and contracting sp spontaneous movement? We know it's linked to the ventricular system in the brain, which we know expands every 20 seconds, uh, expands and retracts every 20 seconds. And so science is a bit behind, but we know in our palpation that there's truth there in terms of how much the fluids are driving the flushing mechanism, that golden light bathing those capillary spaces. And how is the axis of stress? That's what they call it in Italian, lasso di stress. How is the axis of stress involved? There is an actual axis in the body linked to our stress system, our, our fight or flight system, our nervous system that is reactive. And that includes also the vagus nerve. As a, it's the secondary part that's affected by the axis of, uh, axis of stress being triggered. But we work with a bony spine, we work with a visceral spine, a spine made of connective tissues and organs, which I teach. And now I'm starting to teach about the axis or spine of stress that can also actually influence the other two spines. And this is an area that we look at in terms of long COVID and the stress, 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 that's bathing that system with acidic stress hormones, knocking the endocrine hormonal system off track and creating a base constant inflammation. So I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but I went back to study diphtheria in the early 1900s. That was their long, that was their COVID. And uh, Andrew Taylor still talks about how there is a stasis in the lymphatics. There's a fermentation, there's a heat and a drying of the lymph. The lymph crosses through those capillaries and this sort of almost bubbling acidity effect happens when there's heat and inflammation in the body. And there are cytokines that are produced to trigger inflammation that's useful. Our immune system actually responds to inflammation. But when it's always running, what happens is everything gets really acidic and very important membranes that should be gliding, flushing with serous membrane fluid, especially the pleura or the covering of the lungs, they start to heat, dry up, and stick together, creating then less function, less ability to expand, um, and stickiness. They stick together and are they no longer are able to have the potential to glide the way that they should. There are studies. You can go on PubMed and look up massage therapy, lymphatic drainage massage, all sorts of things showing that it has an effect on lowering infection. Now we're dealing in terms of long COVID with a virus or what we're going to talk about are antigens. So with Lyme and sort of these autoimmune strange umbrella syndromes, long haul syndromes, there's an endotoxin component. We can say there may be microbial leftovers. Maybe there's metabolic waste. Maybe there's this sticky acidic bubbling that happens like I just spoke about that puts everything in of a muddiness in the capillary beds. But we also have the antigens. When we look at the virus, any virus produces antigens. The antigens are foreign proteins that are on the surface of the virus that shed off. And the lymphocytes are lovely little immune cells trigger. They produce antibodies. And antibodies say, hey, lymph lymphocytes, the wonderful, beautiful, sparkling, if you see them under the microscope, sparkling little white blood cells go like vacuum cleaners and clean. When we have an overload of antigens and we can't drain those antigens from our system, 
they get backed up because our sinuses don't drain, perhaps we lose our sense of smell. They don't drain out through the clavicles and so we get full and our lungs can't drain. All of the drainage comes up and lands underneath these collarbones. So we've seen that with some of these lymphatic pumping techniques, lymphatic drainage, et cetera, massage, that if bacteria can lessen, why can't the oxygen load go down? So these are things to think about. And I wrote about it in articles. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but oh, we're, I hear somebody. It's Kate, and um, I am been I've been asked Hi. to um, interrupt you gently and nicely, Carrie, and ask everybody who's listening to turn off your cameras because uh, your internet's being impacted, Carrie. We just want to create as little bandwidth Hi. issues for you as possible. Thank you. I unplugged into DSL, but we are in Italy and we don't have the best internet. So thank you for that. I can't see you at all anyway, because I have my screen open, but we can open up again at the end. So we start to look at this acidity, this stickiness, that's all we're gonna call long COVID right now in terms of the osteopathic point of view, based on theory and based on science of how things can help. We're looking at the stickiness. Andrew Taylor still called diphtheria lung fever. And he said that we will see the magnetic power shown in the lungs through the whole system. And remember in the, in the meditation, just remember that every breath you take, your lungs are directly in touch with oxygen. Those are the only organs that take in the oxygen directly and that you can breathe in with your intention, that golden light, because the lungs really do give our, 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 our one of the main eliminatory systems in the body. We always think about the belly, the gut, the gastrointestinal system, but the lungs are, are as important eliminatory system. The tonsils, the nostrils, the glands that of the neck swell and the membranous air passages go into shock. Those are the shock of the waters that I'm talking about is how the lymph fills up and things start to go in shock because the waters are not flushing through. The lungs and the diphtheria constrict and therefore our natural humidifier is limited, making air quite abrasive when it goes into the, the lung tissue to be absorbed, the alveoli te technically. So here are your pleura cavities. We think about the lungs, we think about the lungs, but very important, which is what I teach about. And we do a multidimensional approach to holding, which is basically that we're holding structures, not only with our intention on the lungs, but also the covering of the lungs, the attachment of the lungs and the breathing diaphragm, which is one of the most important structures and the biggest muscle in the entire body. But the pleura cavity, covers the lungs, it's a big bag, it's inelastic. And when the lungs, when you breathe in, the lungs expand into the pleural recess at the bottom. It's like a little extra bag that the lungs can expand into. When we talked, when I spoke about the stickiness and where the visceral pleura that covers the organs, it covers lymphatic nodes, it covers arteries. When it gets sticky and rigid, it's hard for the lungs to expand. The lungs also, by way of the pleura, the parietal pleura, that covers, that attaches to the inside of your ribs, they actually have ligaments that attach the lungs to the neck. So there's some dimensional, multidimensional holds where we're holding a lot of things between the cervical spine and the top of the thoracic sphere, right where those insertions go in. So some people are coming through with long COVID. We're seeing a lot of neck issues, a lot of neurological issues. And when we even just holding these spaces, knowing that they exist with great intention and with heart, with these specialized techniques, we can make change. This is less important, interesting, and that basically shows that the dendrites, which are basically what receive the electrical impulses and bring the body into action, also pass through those capillary beds. You can see a dendrite here, this is actually a mouse. This sort of interesting figure in the middle here that looks kind of like Batman, that is a dendrite. So our nervous system really responds to, or our, I should say the action in our body responds to how pure the waters are passing through those lymphatic channels in the capillary. All sorts of things happen with COVID. This is from Harvard. I studied with Harvard Medical. 
about long COVID because I was so curious, what is the medical world doing? And of course they're talking about how much thrombosis is happening in the blood. When you think about it, those red cells, blood cells are all gathering together. Why is this a mirroring energetically? You might ask that in the biodynamics. We have neutrophils, we have all sorts of inflammatory response, inflammatory response. We have those antigens and those antibodies and all the immune cells are coming to the rescue. That's creating inflammation. That's creating that stickiness and that, that uh, response, that thickness. But we also need the rest action. The anti-inflammatory cytokines need to come in and tell the immune system to go to bed. If we have predisposed injuries that I talked about before, um, impact to the head, the core length, the central chain, the cranial sacral system is locked. It's very difficult for some systems to go into that most necessary anti-inflammatory state to restore and rebuild. It's a constant flush of activation that creates, as we see in the slide, mitochondrial dysfunction, epigenetic alterations. They're all talking about that. And we're paying attention. These are all lists from their slides about how they look at chest wall deformities and prior surgeries and scar tissue. Osteopathically, we look at scar tissue important things to consider when we're working with someone with hands-on work. They talk about getting people to gain control of their life. They talk about all sorts of organ system to consider supportive therapy for the whole organ system. So they're thinking in terms of the body as a community, and I liked this. So I developed with a lot of study, clinical experience with people coming in with all sorts of injuries and the long COVID sort of syndrome, I developed this seven part protocol, which I'm teaching hosted by Kate coming up September 20th. We're meeting once a week on Wednesdays where I will be offering techniques. You'll see me from the practitioner's um, view using the GoPro. I have videos where we're, I'm showing these multi-dimensional holds for the online training. It's more, I don't want to say basic by any chance, but it's less biodynamic in the sense that we are focusing on very specific structures. It's very indicated for pretty much anyone who's putting their hands on people. I'll be teaching in person in New York City, and that's where we go to the stars, where we're going into a very advanced biodynamic approach, where we're doing multi-dimensional, multi-layered holds and allowing the system to do what it needs to do, because essentially we are holding full crumbs. During COVID, I did a lot of work online teaching people how to stretch, teaching people how to open their own palates, teaching them about how important it is to stretch their diaphragm. This is Guy Boyer. He's a French osteopath who developed a stretching technique called Eldoa, where you're able to stretch the fascia in the body. Usually when we're stretching, we're looking at the muscles. These are stretching techniques where you can stretch the fascial chains. And he has one that's for the thoracic spine that's I just thought I would share that. It might be interesting for some of you to practice working with patients a bit online. But teaching people that the diaphragm is one of the most important structures. It is in direct contact with the largest artery in your body, the aorta, the largest vein, the vena cava, the vagus nerve, the largest lymphatic duct. It is an antagonist and protagonist for abdominal muscles. When you defecate, the diaphragm descends. If it's stuck, that makes it difficult. And elimination is key. Getting these antigens, getting the metabolic waste, getting waste out of the body as much as possible. It pressurizes the lung and heart. So many responsibilities. Also neurologically, it's in touch with your, um, with your uh, solar plexus, Blanchnik, um, webbing. It's extremely important. So there is an ebook that I did for Massage Magazine about how you can also work with people online. I talk a little bit about it in the course of how you can coach people that are still unable to get to you in clinic and ideas on how to set up an online consultation. I call it consultation, but you're really coaching people on how to work with their body, working with visualization techniques, a lot of mindfulness work. Here are two articles. If you go to Massage Magazine and you type in my name, these will come up. There's the original protocol that I share on how to work with long COVID based on research, which has developed since I wrote it. It's actually evolved 
for the course that I'm doing with Kate and also for New York. It's taken, it's elevated since I wrote it, but it is uh, very helpful to understand where to begin to put your hands and how to think in terms of supporting your clients. This is me teaching during COVID. It was very difficult. I don't, we're all missing in-person training. However, sometimes it's very nice to be online and to have those videos to constantly refer back to is very key for a lot of people. Having them available and working also um, online is still is still easy for some people who can't necessarily fly across to see me in New York or train with other people. But the epidemic put us all in isolation in every way, as we know. I'm going to change this picture because I don't like it, but it's a little flash of a remembering what we lived. I bring it up because there is definitely now, even the CDC talks about PTSD. It talks about suicide. It talks about anxiety and depression that are all being also linked to the long COVID. CDC talks about people experiencing severe illnesses. They have developed PTSD. There's a long-term reaction. It's There's a, actually PICS is a syndrome that they've named for people who essentially were in ICU and came out with PTSD. So this is where I wanna to talk to the trauma therapists. This is where we become very much global and in community, is it's time for the trauma therapist who can hold that grace and hold, can hold with the experience of holding trauma to begin to put their hands and hold the multidimensional care for some of these people, especially the frontline workers, who would actually witness increased illnesses and deaths and supply shortages and self-quarantine and social isolation, very difficult. This has also inspired me to learn about the Centurions who live past 100, these different places in the world. There's one in Greece, there's one in Japan, there's different places. And I noticed in the studies that it's all about community. It's all about joy. It's all about oxytocin. And so storytelling is something that I found to be very helpful in the work that we're doing hands-on. That storytelling aspect, where we can talk about the lungs and how they perhaps raise their raise their ribs like wings of the butterfly, thinking about the body as a community and storytelling, telling and storytelling, and traveling through traveling through the body and getting to know the body by. Also seeing how, again, like I said, it is mirrored in through nature. I talk about community also in the lobes of the lungs. We have three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left, and they should all have that fluidity. They should spiral not as one block. They need to be loosened and they need one, the upper lobe turns and knocks the next one and that rotates and spirals onto the bottom lobe. It is essential for those lobes to be free. And so in the biodynamic visceral manipulation, multidimensional work, we're able to really dialogue through the fascial chains, the exterior fascial chains, the exterior connective tissue. We're able, even with our intention, to go and sometimes feel how we can create playfulness, freedom, and joy in these spaces. The whole idea is hydration, bringing back, like I said, the, the waters to hydrate, to conduct nerve function, and to wash those muddy areas. In the course, I talk about movement and sound. I studied with Emma. I'm very inspired by her continuum movement practice. She has passed, but her use of sound, <clears throat> even humming, if you're dealing with long COVID, humming can actually move the fluids in the facial bones, perhaps flushing some of these antigens. None of this is scientifically proven yet, but we know that sound can vibrate and move material. So in the classes, I also include some use of sound. I had an enormous car accident two years ago. And as they are, I'm gonna spare the details of how the car was, how I had to get out of the car and all sorts of things, door taken off, things like that. I used continuum movement and I probably had about 12 or 13 adjustments as I sat there and just sounded out and moved my body and just listened to the bones that wanted to go home. This is really key. We can do this for our clients, our patients, if they're open enough to do this choreograph, choreography and move to dance the tissues back home. Again, reaching out to the trauma therapist, 
very important to consider. It's time to join the community and use your expertise. In some ways, you may be more expert, maybe more experts than us to go and hold. That's why I like this seven step protocol is because even if you don't necessarily know all of the structures and anatomical hub sites and all the things that I start to talk about, it's very simplified to just know, hold that space, have the love of the universe be your fulcrum. Maybe this is the body connect to that side of the body, back side of liver, front side of stomach, aorta in between, and work with your intention with your heart while the system uh, aligns itself. Harvard Medical, they're treating, they treat patients with anticoagulants in the hospital, but their main thing that they spoke about is how they're treating long COVID with antidepressants. I found that very interesting. And they're taking a lot of the A-type personalities and putting them to bed, no exertion or exercise for sometimes up to 18 months. Low, low, low exertion, to low to no exertion. And that's because when we exercise, we produce inflammation and the battle of long COVID truly is inflammation. And the inability to self-regulate. Some A-type, you know, as I said, sometimes speech therapy is also indicated medically for people who have spasmodic coughs that don't uh, resolve. And I've taken a lot of what I learned actually to web it into the protocol, thinking about areas we need to keep rooted also in science to find out what is working and perhaps how we can co uh, therapize of this word, how we can work as a community where the medical meets the holistic. Breathing exercises, cough suppression techniques, we know all of the nerve now and exercises that help uh, stretch the vagus nerve, open up the vagus nerve and create relaxation, rest and digest. Uh, this is listed just because they're looking at GERD therapy. We know the stomach and the esophagus is involved because the esophagus goes right behind the heart. It actually articulates with the heart. And we're not just talking about the lungs. It's the cardiorespiratory system that we're looking at, the heart in relation to the lungs. Again, anti-inflammatory. We think about lymphatic drainage for that. So the main insight essentially with long COVID, is that it takes a community of care. The trauma specialist has their place. We need you guys. The manual therapist can connect with heart and start to understand that now they're holding more than just tissue. They're holding stories. They're holding isolation from community. The organs can be seen and held as a society. Andrew Taylor still often talked about the perfect balance where he referred to the gases of the stomach and related it to the planet of Jupiter. It takes a multi-dimensional uh, approach and we all must join hands again in a planetary consciousness to seek and create and uh, seek and recreate fluidity in the system and within ourselves. So here are the courses that are coming up. Again, September 20th is online with Kate. And then we have, oh, it's moving. That's interesting. <laughs> And then we have with the stillpointcst.com, the Stillpoint School in New York. I will be there in person on November 8th. You can also connect with me by uh, via threebodiesinstitute.com. This is just a screenshot of the sort of view in terms of what you'll expect online. We will see how I, the vision of treatment and the explanation is very much, um, people think, how can you learn online? You really can when you see it from the point of view of the practitioner. Okay, so what is long COVID? I'm gonna kind of go through this because I think everybody's probably already processed a lot of what is going on and what sort of symptoms that are linked to long COVID. But I'm gonna place in front of you also what the CDC is saying and more about Harvard. So the CDC says that it's broadly defined as signs, symptoms, and conditions that continue or develop after acute COVID. And it talks about now, since July 2021, it's actually been listed under the American Disabilities Act as an actual disease, which is helpful to a lot of people. So I have three pages we're looking at, fatigue. We're looking at what they call post-exertional malaise, which basically is fatigue that is not um, remedied with sleep, fever, respiratory heart problems, we know difficulty breathing, cough, fast beating, pounding heart, heart issues, neurological 
stomach pain, diarrhea. We don't think about headaches and diarrhea as being related to COVID, but I'm seeing a lot of it now in clinic actually. And it feels like it's long COVID because there's diarrhea, but there's also this sort of achiness, flu-like symptoms. People are feeling their bones, which they don't usually feel. Um, pins and needle feelings, et cetera. These are a lot of the symptoms listed. Menstrual cycle changes, skin expressions, joint and muscle pain, very as I was seeing other autoimmune disorders. It can last weeks, months, years. People can have it when they didn't even know they had COVID or didn't even know that they were infected. All scans can come back, including blood work can come back as normal. Um, some people may experience multi-organ effects that involve the heart, lung, kidney, skin, and brain. Again, notes taken to web into how we can help people with hands-on work. Some people can develop new health conditions, diabetes, uh, heart problems. We know about the blood clots, a lot of thrombosis out there, uh, neurological conditions again. There's something called MIS, which is multi-system inflammatory syndrome, essentially affecting inflammation, affecting, uh, affecting the whole body. It's more serious. Harvard uh, defines a chronic cough uh, as more than eight weeks. Uh, which I found interesting. There's the common pathology where they're looking at the upper and lower respiratory tracts, the pericardium, which is the covering of the heart, the esophagus, the diaphragm, and the stomach. So we're working again with these other structures to help the body. Essentially, what I want to say about this is that these are all, if they're stuck, your main lymphatic vessels that travel up the front of your spine, all of the lymphatics are going up towards the heavens to drain underneath these two bones, all of your lymph. And if those organs are stuck, every time you breathe and laugh and chew and swim and walk, those organs should be moving and pumping the lymphatics upwards because they do not have muscular tissue. They rely on movement. So it's to say that lymphatics are getting maybe stuck because these organs are having difficulty and maybe these organs are having difficulty and the function is inhibited because they're actually not moving as well as before because of that stickiness factor. So we're releasing the shock with biodynamics. This is where I'd like to share with you some of the things that helped me grow as a practitioner. So yes, we do visceral manipulation. These, tech, these handholds are not part of the protocol. These just show sort of some of the multidimensional holds that can up, upper left is actually with the intention of working towards the uh, aorta. The one on the right is working with the mesentery, which is what the root that holds your small intestine, et cetera. But putting our hands on is key. This room manipulation, we're working with soft tissue techniques to help release the connective tissue that's linked to organs. And it's very, very effective. Classically, we do some oscillation, balancing the clavicle until it frees itself or the soft tissue around it, I should say, frees itself so that lymphatic drainage can happen. That lymphatic fluid that's coming up in front of the spine drains there. Most of the cranial lymphatics drain on your right side and the rest of the body essentially drains on your left. So if you're stuck here, it's the number one broken bone in the body then you can have a hard time draining. And again, looking at the antigens produced by viruses or endotoxins produced by bacteria, we want these areas to be open. In the past, we were doing a lot of bouncing and oscillation work, which was renamed as Traeger. But now we're doing a lot more multidimensional where when we're working in that space, we might be connecting more towards the front of the spine with our intention, holding a grander view and also holding the person with acknowledgement of them being a person. We're not just bodies that we, as you know, we are people and the qualities of the water can make a difference. We, most of you know about Amoto who um, crystals that depending on a person's mood or energy that's given. So we can talk about how stress may also muddle the waters, whereas happiness and joy may also clarify them in some ways, if we believe in this alternative thinking. Previous trauma is important to recognize with long COVID. I'm going to be wrapping it up here soon. 
here again are some of his pictures of the water molecules. We are holding things differently now. We have been in isolation. We are now having a different intention in clinic to hold bigger things. We can bring, and as I said, mirror even offerings from nature, the nourishment from nature, all the way down, imagining that all the way down to the place where we actually absorb oxygen in the alveoles of the lungs. We talked about the antigen, the substance that's capable of stimulating that immune response. We can think about that and we can just ask that golden light and ask our body connecting with our, our system and our soul and asking the body to let that go. Asking the trauma brain, what does it need? And we begin parenting ourselves. Uh, the endocrine system responds to storytelling, responds to laughing yoga, responds to redirecting the afraid mind to something that's just beautiful, an essential oil, or just a, a smile to send joy, even if it's to sort of fake it until you make it, it's to send joy to the brain in that instant. Um, we know that even our own makes antigens, they're called self antigens, and they can actually change. They can change to the point where we can react to our own antigens. And again, that's where autoimmune dysfunction comes in. Why is that? Why are we separating from self? Why are our bodies separating from, from our spirit? And what are the pathogens and dysfunction like? heavy metals, pathogens, uh, fungal, what is it that can, trauma, what is it can come that can come and land in those fracture sites to create a separation from self? We want to honor the natural process. The body is so strong. It makes a human bleach all on its own. We want to honor the process of the natural process and honor that our body has great wisdom. I have had issues with some practitioners that work with Lyme and long haul syndromes where they start to say, oh, the bugs, they can change form, they can hide, we have to stay on top of it, the bugs, the bugs. And then people say, I don't want to live in this body. But what we can do is that it might not be the bugs, it might just be that the system is having a difficult time draining and to focus on empowering and lifting up and opening, focusing on bathing the capillary beds and really honoring the natural strength of the body and the wisdom. So being in Italy, and this is how we're going to wrap it up, which is really incredible, is just sourcing. We have have some people who have been injured by practitioners or injured by feeling a sense of victimization because they're told, we don't know how to help you, or you're just sick, or you this, or you that. Can we turn to nature? Can we turn to the power of art and bathe our vision and meditate on the beauty of the ribs of David? This is Michelangelo Bonarotti on the right. I just went to the Banarotti house a couple of weeks ago and, and saw so many mastery paintings of his and sculptures. But can we source other things that truly can create an exchange and get the human aspect out of the way? When we're in touch with something that touches us, we can truly open ourselves out, open ourselves in order to reconnect to our original self, our original grid. Maybe there's an embryological moment where the body remembers the perfection I am. And so it is. So these are ways we're starting to now work with people, taking them to uh, the amazing sites. We call them artistic vortexes. We call it healing with the saints in a non-religious way. We go to these places where miracles happen and we say miracles can happen. This is a picture I took at the Uffizi Gallery. It's a Botticelli. And this is what inspired me to start what I call the triangular hold. It's a multi-dimensional where he has this medallion and it's 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 projecting outwards. It's it's hold it's held and in front of the pericardium. And it just there was a moment where something happened where I realized we are multi-dimensional and we can source these portals. We can create portals even with our holds. And that's where we go more into the biodynamic work. Like I said, working with triangles between the liver and stomach is very key. We learned in osteopathic college to compress or to dialogue. But when we're holding dimensions and we're thinking about some of the neurological pathways that are important to functionality, 
when we're knowing that the liver harbors anger and the stomach might be linked to antigens, just bathing and disrupting the mucosal lining inside, it's a different approach now working with triangles. More multidimensional holds, abdominal work. You, you work, you can work. A trauma therapist might be thinking, well, this is difficult for me. I work with people sitting, maybe people that are doing Traeger or other therapy, acupuncture. You don't need to be undressed to have these techniques work. In fact, some people don't like to be undressed. It's very European actually, um, but don't be afraid of being able to work with people with the with the massage table clothed, you will be as, effect, as, as effective. We do meditations as well. Sometimes when we're holding multi, multi-dimensional holds and we're talking and guiding the person to go into the chambers, what does it look like inside your liver? And working with that, making a connection again by having them go in and describe and dialogue, what does it feel like in between the left and right lobe and educating them on their structures in their body. This is where your liver is, right underneath your right ribs. And to connect with self again is to come home. This is just a nice picture showing the heart, the trachea, which is the natural humidifier is right behind the heart. And you have the esophagus, all the lymph nodes that we talked about. Here's the mama diaphragm, the stomach underneath. And again, in the different holds, we're able to work more in layers with our intention. This is uh, another technique I uh, studied with Robert Roos for working with compression in triangles. Sometimes we can be a little active. Sometimes the compression feels really good. For and you can feel the tissue telling you sometimes, do I need compression or do I need expansion? So there's playfulness. So we are gonna end here. I just wanna say about the cranial work that this is a really spectacular, place to do the storytelling you can I actually was it came to me the just right from the Goldilocks and the three bears when I wrote this presentation and I started going into these deep meditation my own stress axis I would get below the cervical sphere and my body would say it's too much this is all too much and I thought to myself why Am I hearing this message? It's too much. And then I realized that it has been too much. It's too much. The pandemic was too much. What we feel and the amount that we have to hold in clinic right now is too much. Our nervous systems and the way we have lived for so long may just be too much. And if we go and we start to test whether we're working as a practitioner, whether you're working as a trauma therapist, whether you're mothering your children at the table, it's that testing, too hot, too cold. We're finding just right. That's the whole story of the multidimensional approach is finding the just right, both also in our self-care for ourselves as practitioners and how much we're taking on, how much we're dialoguing, how much we're working, how much, how much we're channeling. The whole idea is just right. And then I realized that this actually, this concept has been spread across other disciplines, psychology, biology, even Stephen Hawkins said, like Goldilocks, the development of intelligent life requires that planetary temperatures be just right. Bringing me back to some of the literature where Andrew Taylor still spoke about the gases of Jupiter in relation to the stomach and how it has to be all just right. We're looking for the just right. I come from what I call a three bodies protocol. I discovered years later that that's also a uh, SIL system was talked about. Um, three bodies in osteopathic college, they called it the three protocols where you're palpating the musculoskeletal, you're lifting off and feeling into the fluids. And then we know that there's an electromagnetic body that can also hold trauma. Well, in this new approach, online, we're sticking more to understanding the difference in palpation between musculoskeletal, fluidic, and electromagnetic. In the advanced biodynamics that I'll be teaching in person, we'll go more into holding all three at once. This is part of what I'm calling the chamber hold, the community hold, the multidimensional hold. That's where we sort of take off to the moon with our palpation. So as said, 
time is very important. These are the cells that make up your blood brain barrier. We can hold the meninges with our intention and we can dialogue with our clients about how beautiful, how beautiful the glial cells and astrocytes are. They glow under the microscope like rainbows. They are flushed with the most incredible biodynamic fluid. There are hues of yellow and red. And we bring those colors into the ventricles, allowing that to seep into the cranial sphere. We allow it to penetrate through the arachnoid from the pia mater, the soft mother, to the arachnoid, reaching out to the inside seal of the dura mater. We can work with this dialogue while we're working and the nervous system says, okay, that anti it's time. The anti-inflammatory serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, all of the happy hormones. And then we can teach our clients as well how to do laughing yoga and create that stimulation, endorphins, endorphins, but keeping it, keeping it in the storytelling for now. Going to the San Marco Monastery, we worked with the Gabriel, the angel Gabriel. This is from Fra Angelico. This I actually took this picture there, where we can again find that storytelling, looking that in person those wings of the angel of Gabriel actually sparkle and to really just bring those illuminating colors into the ribs and creating a visualization where every time a person breathes their angelic energy is just expanding and retracting and you're expanding and retracting this was a friar one of the most famous renaissance artists was known for illuminating colors unnatural colors vitality illumination and to bring that into the body with no other medical doctor or influencer to tell them what's going on with their body. They have something they can hold on to and bring that into the different mechanisms. We look at inspiration, the upper ribs go up and down and the lower ribs do what we call bucket handle. They do more of an expansion outwards. We can work with these simple stories and some of these massively enlightening enlightenment carrying images and reflect it into the into the physiology while we're working and i teach a bit how to do that it isn't as difficult as it seems these are the wings a little bit more closely okay the landscapes of our lungs we're doing world work the voice of the trees is the wind and the wind is in our lungs and connection the birth of the triangle and hold is something that's new in terms of my past teaching. And again, whatever you're doing in terms of holding any of this with what you do tomorrow or in the future, training with me or not, you are doing world work just being here today and holding this space that we can emit now and take back out to our community. So thank you so much for participating. Um, to have shared this information with you i'm gonna you can invite i'm gonna invite you all to open your videos if that's okay with kate yes we have time for a few questions if anybody we have about five or six minutes so does anyone have a question for carrie if you don't want to be recorded feel free to write it in the chat i'll speak it People are saying nice things in the chat, you know, stunning. Thank you so much. Incroyable. Merci. <laughs> Just stunning. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you a lot. Sorry, I had to leave. Yes. Yeah, people are looking forward to the recording because your sound kept going in and out a bit, Carrie. So, yeah, I. No, it's interesting. Technology plays a little bit. Where there's light, there's also shadow sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that the recording comes through. I am, I'm plugged in, but I feel like everybody downloaded what they need to download. Yeah. Um, Joseph says, um, I'm curious if the work around the glial cells and the blood brain barrier will be included in both classes or more one than the other. 
Oh, it's in both. I would say we spend a more time in person. We're spending more time receiving that because there's an actual exchange between the students, whereas online, it's more of an experience. I find that with the videos online, the way that there's a meditation aspect to it, there's a lot of visual storytelling that I do with it, that people are sort of going into trance and receiving it through the meditation, almost like a guided experience. Whereas uh, there is that in person, but then there's also the exchange to receive it with hands-on. Uh, so, yes, there will be a recording of this presentation. I'm not sure about the transcript. I'll have to see. Um, are there fascial and lymph techniques that you would give clients, give to clients for it to do with themselves? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I mentioned is helping them learn how to stretch their own diaphragm to open up the space around the cisterna chile, which is the largest lymph node in the body, right at the base underneath the underneath the diaphragm. But there are lymphatics included. In fact, that's what I call the pooling site. So I talk about an anatomical hub areas, like the back of the peritoneal sac, which is the sac that holds the majority of the organs in the belly. It's where there are a lot of lymph nodes and there's what I call hub space where we really need to in terms of stickiness, especially with our holds and intention and dialogue with those areas, as well as the pooling areas, like the inguinal area, the folds of our groin, our, our axillary areas, the armpits, those are big pooling areas where a lot of endotoxins and antigens can gather. Okay, thank you. Those are all the all the things I saw from the chat. Is there anybody else who has a question or a comment for Carrie before we complete? I think I do, Kate. Oh, um, Sheila. Yeah. Um, if you're um, uh, if you're feeling tender when you take your bra off under your arms, even if you do not wear underwires, is that congestion of the lymph glands? Do you think? Um, that's a good question because I have uh, really guided people if they can to take the bras off, take the bras off because they are gathering fluids. This is the diaphragm. We look at the bra, the, the bra strap is usually at thoracic vertebra seven and the diaphragm attaches just below it and goes all the way down to the lumbar spine. And so having anything constricting in that area um, is, yeah, it's not indicated. It can cause all sorts of rashes. There's skin expression. We want as much drainage and fluidity as possible. So take those bras off if you feel comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Maria Baca. Hey. Uh, first, I just want to say that it's wonderful to see a fellow CEO grad do Yay. the integration. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it yeah, it's so I can see how the foundation of the osteopathic training has informed your teaching, but that like adding your own handwriting and that artistry, um, not just mechanics, like really comes through and look I look forward to seeing how that grows with you and, and the experience of your teaching and um i'm curious i was really drawn into the title of your classes the giving the shock to the waters as i have found myself actually doing more developmental trauma therapy in the water as a in synthesizing the osteopath process in that and sometimes i feel like even on the table or even in visualization connection with people energetically having a sense of being in the water but i'm curious to have your inside sense of what waters if it's not external or internal we can release how you like sense the palpate of shock um and then balance that into a fluid of the healing waters so just curious and if we just in conclusion, I can feel my body just like, I want to feel a taste of that. So um, if you just 
give a little well, taste. It's, uh, that's a really good question, Maria. It's good to see if that was fellow CEO graduate. Gradu- I don't know if you graduated, but um, it's good to see you. And thank you so much for your feedback. It means a lot to me coming from a fellow colleague. Um, the feeling is there is the icicle test. I don't know if you remember, there's a little bit that we can rock the body like a baby. So in osteopathic college, we're, we're sort of bouncing the people on the table. And that's also effective. Some people love that. But there's this aspect where we can just rock the body in a way that feels so good. And you can tell when something's yeah. because it's moving like a block. We would call it in college, the vault. So we want to see with a gentle nurturing rocking sensation, where is a block of the body moving? When we're rocking the body, the thoracic cage as it nicely rocks back and forth, which is so nice for sticky lungs. Maybe the belly's not moving or maybe it's moving together as one cylinder when they should really be doing opposites to compensate. Mm-hmm. We look at the lumbar spine and the cervical spine as some of the most compensatory areas in the whole body. So they should really be nice and fluid. With the long COVID, we're having these big buildups in the diaphragmatic areas because of this lymph, I call it muddiness. And so a lot of this movement, slow movement on the table and getting people to just sort of rock themselves, getting up and dancing and moving continual movement in the pool is fantastic. Anything in the pool where you're just allowing that embryonic, that limitless motion even getting up in the morning and just singing or putting on some slow music and imagining yourself in water playfully with that baby elephant and just creating these visualizations where you are visualizing yourself even in water. These are the ways as we do it often with our patients and on our own, we can really start to that shock that I talk about is really that filling and stickiness and stuckness of the fluids in the limbs in the body in those pool areas do you all feel that i hope so i felt that <laughs> yes thanks i feel the the streams like the like when the rivers of the get rain get that hydration and then can flow through my arms and my lymph i feel that thank you excellent you're welcome Maria. nice to see you Oh, well, thank you, Maria. Let's see. Mimi wants to know about the prevalence of vertigo, like dizziness symptoms and the protocol. Thank you. This has been informative. So is, can you speak to dizziness and vertigo, Carrie? I can. I, I what, it, what I've seen help people is really opening up this thoracic inlet, this upper diaphragm space that's so boggy and it's creating a bit of a clamp and clench on blood flow going up. It doesn't mean that you have pathology, there's something wrong with the carotid or there's something wrong with the jugular, but the jugular and carotid exchange, it's like pushing up against muddy dam water. It's just this area, I've seen a lot of success in also um, opening up the collar, opening up the upper portion Mm -hmm. of the thoracic sphere and also looking at the relationship between the temporal bone and iliac they mirror each other embryologically so if somebody fell on a hip maybe they have something going on on the right on the right side maybe the the right tmj is starting to act up so we look at history as well did you fall what are the mirroring sensations is there something going on uh, in terms of dental there's been a lot of dental where people have been getting better because they're finding these little dental things that maybe before wouldn't have been a big deal, but because of all this congestion, some of the dental stuff is coming forward where the little things now need to be taken care of in order for for the optimal drainage from the cranial sphere. Mm -hmm. I have to close though. Thank you all. You can always connect with me. My email is osteo in Florence. That's kind of easy to remember osteoinflorence at gmail.com. Write me if you need me. Um, you know, this is the beginning of building. Oh, you can hear the European sirens outside my door. Um, this is the beginning of community as well and knowing one another and meeting today in this container. And so I send energy to all of you and gratitude and we will be connected.
Yeah, thank you, Carrie. Thank you for giving us your quality attention and your instruction that's coming. We look forward to hosting you starting on the 20th for a six-part course and supporting your work in New York City at the Still Point Cranial School.